In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to make a kaleidoscope, which is a toy that mirrors to create cool patterns out of the colors around you. So we're going to make a simulation of one. We're going to start by making a variable for size and making it equal 10. Then we'll make another variable, and this one is going to be called change. And we're going to make that equal random and then in parentheses 0.75 and three. And this is how we're going to change the size of our ellipses. So we're going to start out by making a set of ellipses. The first one's going to be at 500 comma 500 and we want to make all of them height and width of size. So to make this go a little bit faster I'm just going to, going to copy and paste and for this set we want to make five. The first one's at 500 comma 500 the next one's going to be at 1,000, 500. That one's going to be at 0, 500. Our fourth one will be at 500, 0. And our fifth one will be at 500, 1,000. And you can't really see them, but no worries because we will fix that later on. So the next thing that we're going to do is make another set of ellipses, but this time we're going to make four of them. So I'm just going to paste that same code we used. And it's important to keep these in kind of separate chunks of code is a way you can think about it, I guess, because later on we're going to apply different colors to them. So the first ellipse for this is going to be at 250, 250, still with the height and width of size. The next one will be at 750, 250. Our third one is going to be at 250 comma 750 and then our fourth one for this set is going to be at 750 comma 750 and at this point we're just kind of peppering these different circles around the canvas and that's going to make it so that later on it makes a really cool looking pattern so we are going to do four more ellipses and for these ones they're going to be a height and width of size as well. So we're just going to use that same code and we're going to paste it in there four times. So this code basically just starts out with a bunch of ellipses. So copying and pasting will be really helpful. We're going to start with one at zero comma zero. Our next one is going to be at a thousand comma zero. Our third one we want to put at zero comma one thousand. And our last one's going to go to 1,000, 1,000. And like I said, make sure that you have these split up into different chunks. You can make comments on your code that say set one, set two, set three, but we'll be applying different colors to them later on. So it's just easier to have them all sorted out ahead of time. All right, so now we're gonna move down and we're going to make these grow. So to do that, we're going to say size equals size plus change. So now, Every time that we reload this, it will be a different number for change. So change is kind of like the speed you can think of it as, um, or just the growth of the circle. So every time you reload it, it'll change somewhere between 0 0.75 and 3. So now what we are going to have to do is make it so that if our size gets too big, that our balls shrink instead of growing. So we're going to say if size is greater than 2500 and then we're going to use these two lines that mean or and we're going to say or size is less than six then change equals negative change we basically want them to shrink instead of grow and to make that those two lines that mean or it's right underneath your backspace key so that's a really useful way that you can cut down on the number of conditional statements that you have to make. So now we're going to move on to making the gradient colors. So to do that, we're going to make three variables, R, G, and B, and we're going to set each one of them equal to random in parentheses 200. So some random number up to 200. All right, so we have our R, G, and B. Then we are going to make three more variables for R2, G2, and B2. 
And those ones we're going to set equal to random and then in parentheses two comma five. So each one of those will be equal to the same amount. All right. So this is going to help us with our changing colors that we're going to want to have. All right. The next thing that we want to do is go down into our function draw. You can do this anywhere. I just chose to keep all these kind of lines together. And we're going to do r equals r plus r2. All right. And we're going to do the same thing for each one of the colors. g equals g plus g2. And b will equal b plus b2. All right. The next thing that we're going to want to do is create a conditional statement for this that says if, and then in a set of parentheses, r is less than zero or, so the two lines that mean or, r is greater than 200. Then what we're going to want to happen is we want R2 to equal negative R2. All right, so this is going to help us when we're changing up our colors. So we want to do this for each one of our color sets. So R, G, and B for red, green, and blue. So we have our first one built in there. So we can just copy and paste that and do it for G and B as well. Copying and pasting is a really good way to save some time when you're writing a lot of code like this, but you just have to be really careful with it. Make sure that you are actually changing every letter to the letter you want it to be. All right, so now we're ready to apply all of this to our circles. So we're going to go back up to the very top inside of function draw still. And we want to add no and then a capital F fill with a set of parentheses. So this takes away the inside fill color from our circle so that they can overlap and we can see what's underneath instead of a fill. We're going to change the stroke weight to three, making sure that your W is capitalized. And then we're going to apply a stroke of R, G, B, and then let's do 255 minus R. And that'll be the red, green, and blue values. And then the last one is the opacity. So how opaque is your circle, your color? And we're going to apply a different stroke to our next set of four. We're going to do B comma G comma G comma G. And then our last one, let's do stroke and then in a set of parentheses, G comma B comma R comma B. And play around with different variations of this. There's no one right set to make it look good. There's a lot of different ways you could do this that it would look super cool. And this is what our finished product looks like. It's kind of a mesmerizing kaleidoscope. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to stay up to date with all of our newest videos.